All right, everyone, this is Josh Rubin from East West Healing. Today, I want to talk about tyrosine and the thyroid. Before we jump in, as always, please like this video, show us a little support. Support. Please hit that notification button or subscription button, wherever it is. So every single Wednesday, when we put out a video, you get notified first. Now, before we jump in, I love wearing the shirt because it causes so much controversy because everyone thinks I'm promoting the, um, the Illuminati because of the symbol. This is how crazy we are. This is a company, it's an athletic company called Misfit Athletics. That's an M, let's move on. Okay, let's move on. Okay, so we're talking about tyrosine and the thyroid. No, here's the thing. If you're like most people in society, right? The medical community, even the naturopathic community, even the functional medicine community, right? They've left you shorthanded, right? You've had symptoms, you've had issues, you've gone in. Maybe you do have a thyroid issue or maybe you do have a functional thyroid issue or any issue we could say, but they really have not been able to help you. And what happens is you're left to your own devices, right? This happened to me in 2014, so I completely empathize and I get it. I had to take health into my own hands after working with doctors for eight months, labs upon labs upon labs upon labs upon, labs upon MRIs. In the end, they said, this is what's going on, but I'm like, what, what can we do? Well, we don't really know. So I had to take matters into my own, own hands, so I completely empathize and I get it. But the problem is, you're left with experimentation, trying different things, chasing your symptoms, right? Playing doctor, and the problem is we don't know enough and we're only doing the best we can, right, with what we got or with what we know. And a lot of the times it leads us down the path of, since we're talking about tyrosine, well, since, and you don't look at it like this, but in a sense, this is how we think about it because this is how it's promoted. You know, um, TRH is stimulated from the hypothalamus, which copper plays a huge role in that. We're not even talking about that today, or no one talks about that. Um, but TRH stimulates TSH from the anterior pituitary, which uh, stimulates thyroid peroc peroxidase, which joins with tyrosine and iodine to produce thyroid hormone, which, you know, then is converted in the periphery, the liver, etc. 20% the gut, to active thyroid hormone T3. The problem is everyone goes, well, because iodine and, and tyrosine are used, to make thyroid hormone. If you have low thyroid hormone, all you need to do is take these. The rationale, the rationale, the rationale, right? But this is what we do. The problem is there's dangers and implications with doing that, right? We're not talking about iodine, number one, but number, but number two with iodine. If you want iodine, you don't need to take the supplement. Just eat the foods. Kelp is not the only food with iodine. I'm pretty sure we've done a YouTube on it. Um, if not, on our Instagram, we have many posts on it, two or three posts on iodine and food. It's in so many different foods. Google them. Just start eating more metabolic foods, which have iodine in them. You won't have to stress about the iodine. But it's never the missing link when it comes to the thyroid. I hate to say that. If it's that easy, we wouldn't be a business. No one would have thyroid issues and we'd be good because they could just take iodine. It doesn't work like that, right? We don't recommend taking the supplement, first of all. But tyrosine, here's the problem, right? First of all, what we're not looking at is how are we living and eating in our story that got us to this point that had to have a thyroid issue. That's affecting TRH or TSH or the production or the conversion. We're not looking at our story. We're not looking at the blocking factors. We're just looking at how we can increase the production, but we're not looking at anything in between. And that's another reason why it doesn't work, right? Because if we don't change the environment, nothing we do is going to ch create change, whether it's a medication or someone. But tyrosine is a precursor to dopamine, was a precursor to epinephrine and, and, and a, uh, adrenaline, in a sense, and, and um, norepinephrine within the sympathetic nervous system. So here's the problem with this is most of us are living beyond our means. Most of us are chronically stressed. Most of us can't meet our metabolic demands every day because we're eating less, we're dieting, we're restricting foods, we're afraid of foods, we're overtraining, we're working, we're not sleeping, we're on TikTok, right? We are pushed and pushed and pushed way beyond what we can handle. That is causing the problem in itself. But we're already in a stress physiological state. We're stuck in this phys stress physiological state, right? Stress is good. It helps us build resiliency. The problem is when you're stuck there and you're there 24 seven running from a lion, it's not a good thing. So now we take tyrosine and it continually stimulates 
the sympathetic nervous system, pushing us deeper. Now the problem is dopamine's a great hormone, right? Helps us think better, feel better, um, feel clearer, right? But it's that adrenaline response that we're really feeling. And the problem is over time that can lead to many other problems in our system because too much of that is not a good thing. It's like anything, right? Um, too much dopamine can be a problem in the system. And this is why some people take Tarzine and they go, I actually feel better. I have more energy. Of course you do. You're essentially in an adrenaline junkie, hyperadrenaline state. And it's driving you deeper into the sympathetic state. But here's the kicker with this. The more you get pushed in that sympathetic state and you don't change how you're living and eating, you're going to continually inhibit thyroid hormone production or conversion, most essentially, because I'm going to simplify it. Chronic stress. HPA issue, cortisol issue, that's gonna affect T4 to T3 conversion. Doesn't matter how much iodine you take, tyrosine you take, ty tyrosine you take, your body is still in a stressed state. So you're still not gonna convert it. Now you're just gonna feel tired and wired and it's gonna push you deeper and deeper and deeper. So here's the kicker with this. Of course, we promote eating food. We promote creating change because if you change the state, right? You change how you feel. Don't chase the effect, change the cause. You change the cause, you're organically gonna change the effect, right? But if we take a step back and say, how am I living to not support my thyroid to do what it's designed to do? How am I eating or not eating to support my thyroid to do what it's designed to do? What am I not eating to support my thyroid to do what it's designed to do? That's what we need to start doing because if you do that, you won't need the iodine, you won't need the tyrosine, and you won't need all these synthetic supplements to support you. We do this with people every single day and we've been doing it for 22 years. So you're looking for the magic pill and the magic bullet, there's no such thing. It's in your hands, that's right in front of you. The question is, are you ready to step up to the plate to create change? Or are you trying to do more of the same plus more of the same equals more of the same? That's insanity. That's why we're so confused. So you have to step out. You have to step out of that comfort zone. You have to begin to create change to create change. Peace.